So in the 8 or so months since I uploaded my which version of OutRun 2 as the best video, there have been a couple of fairly significant developments in the world of OutRun 2. So significant in fact, that I felt compelled to put together this video to act as kind of a postscript to that one, so that I can talk about what's changed subsequently. There's also a couple of little things that I wanted to revisit from the 30 years of OutRun video I made about 3 years ago, where I looked at the complete history of the OutRun games as a whole. So this seemed as good a time as any to do that. So the first of the major developments is that in the time since I uploaded which version of OutRun 2 is the best, the Sega Lindeberg version of OutRun 2 SPDX has now been made playable on Windows 7, and this is what you can see playing in the background. At the time of recording in my last video, it was only possible to play this cracked version of the arcade game using the arcade loader Technoparrot on Windows 10 PCs. This meant that when it came to the all-important decision about which version of the game was the best, a certain amount of conjecture was necessary on my part, as I'd never actually been able to play OutRun 2 SPDX before. Not anymore though. Since then, I've been able to give the game a damn good thrashing, so to speak, and really get my teeth into it. It looks incredible and plays absolutely fantastically with my racing wheel. Technoparrot actually allows you to upscale the game beyond its native resolution, and I'm playing the game here in full 1080p. One of the members of the Build Your Own Arcade Controls forum by the name of Boomslang had created several false feedback plugins for the various different racing games in Technoparrot, and around the time I was first able to start playing this, he was just in the process of fine-tuning the one that he'd created for SPDX, and force feedback now works brilliantly in the game. So now that I've actually been able to play the game properly, how do I think SPDX stacks up next to the other versions? I haven't included the PS2 or PSP versions in my comparisons here, for the simple reason that I don't own them, and, as mentioned in my last video, it's a generally held consensus that, despite being a damn good port and a fine looking game in its own right, the PS2, and by association PSP versions of Coast to Coast, are graphically the weakest of the multi-system versions. Visually, I think SPDX has got the edge graphically over the PC and Xbox games. I've mentioned before how the bloom effects were missing from the PC version of Coast to Coast, but it was possible to get them partially working again by putting the lens flare effects in the correct game folder. Even doing this though, there's still a noticeable difference in how certain stages look between the PC version and SPDX. As well as improved Bloom, I think SPDX looks a bit sharper than the PC version too, even with both versions of the game running at 1080p. SPDX definitely looks a lot nicer than Coast to Coast on the Xbox though, even with the upscaling magic of the 360 going on. The Xbox version is noticeably a lot more low res looking compared to SPDX, although it has got the Bloom effects that weren't in the PC version. Outrun Online Arcade was the game that I'd previously identified as the best looking version in my opinion. I'd assume then that SPDX would basically be identical, but I was surprised to find that there was actually a fairly noticeable difference between the two. The bloom effects in Outrun Online Arcade seem to be oversaturated when compared to SPDX. Does this make the game look worse? I think that this is a bit of a subjective matter, because in some respects this oversaturated bloom can look really nice like the orange glow on the cars and the track in the legend stage, but it can also obscure some of the background details in some stages, like the clouds in the bay bridge level, or the mountain in the ice scape stage. Now personally, I actually quite like the oversaturated effect in Outrun Online Arcade. I think it gives the game a slightly dreamy look, which is totally in keeping with the whole Sega Blue Skies aesthetic of Outrun. Like I said though, it's subjective and really a matter of personal preference. 
This difference in the intensity of the bloom is something I'd also previously noticed when comparing OutRun Online Arcade to the Xbox version of Coast to Coast. Something I've only just noticed myself for the first time whilst making this video is that the sun is entirely absent in the sunny beach stage at the start on the Xbox version. One issue that this emulated version of SPDX has though is that sometimes the sun in the game is too bright and can totally obscure your view of the road. I believe this is an emulation problem specific to changing the game's native resolution. The smoke from your tyres is also missing right at the start of the game when you pull up in front of the starting lights in SPDX. In a similar vein of peculiarities of specific versions, for some weird reason, the little burst of flame that normally comes out of your exhaust pipes when you change gear is now absent in the PC version, although it did used to be in there. Where's it gone? I'd mentioned as well previously about how some of the end of course animations from the arcade version of SPDX were missing in most of the versions of Coast to Coast, apart from the Japanese PS2 version of Outrun 2SP oddly enough, and the only western version of the game that included them was Outrun Online Arcade. But it turns out there's actually some discrepancies here too. The volcano that erupts at the end of the giant statues SP Course A shoots plumes of grey smoke into the air and makes the whole screen shake with an accompanying rumbling sound effect. The volcano in Outrun Online Arcade by comparison just sort of silently smoulders, with no screen shaking or sound effects of any sort. Likewise, the shuttle takeoff at the end of the Milky Way SP Course E is totally silent in online arcade, but is accompanied by the sound of the rockets igniting in the SPDX version. Additionally, on a final note on the game's visuals, I'd mentioned in my previous video that Outrun Online Arcade was the only version of the game that actually had its HUD elements, like the in-game timer, speedometer and your score in the correct aspect ratio. And I'm pleased to say that as you would expect in the proper arcade version, everything is the right size in SPDX. Unlike the PC and Xbox versions, which stretch them out of shape when you play the game in widescreen 16x9. So bearing everything in mind that I've just talked about, when it comes down to which version of the game looks best, it isn't simply a case of, is it HD? Yes. Has it got bloom? Yes. Got the missing end of course animations? Yes. Because each version is a little different to the other. Overall, I still think Online Arcade is the best looking version, just. But you can only play the 15 SP stages in it and not the original Outrun 2 ones. So I think overall SBDX is the winner here, despite the couple of little bugs that are currently present in the emulation. Like the sun being too bright in some places and the missing tyre smoke right at the start of the game. Occasionally the audio can throw a bit of a wobble in the Lindeberg version as well and go a bit crackly and strange, but that doesn't seem to happen too often though. So does this mean that I've now changed my mind and that SPDX is not the PC version, which I'd said I reckoned was the best version in my previous video, off its pedestal? Well, this is where things get interesting and brings me to the other big development in the world of Outrun 2 I wanted to talk about. I've mentioned Howard Casto's Outrun 2 FXT mod for the PC version of Outrun Coast to Coast before, that corrects a lot of the issues the game had related to its lack of wheel support and force feedback effects, whilst also allowing you to add extra music and tidying up a lot of the in-game menus and making them appear more arcade-like. Well, since my previous video, Howard's also created an app for the game that lets you create your own custom courses in either the traditional five-stage branch route or the 15-stage continuous route. What's great about this is that it lets you mix and match any combination of the Outrun 2 and SP stages together, so you can have stages in your custom route that you wouldn't normally encounter together in a single playthrough. The app also lets you play the stages normally or in reversed mode, and also lets you add in the variant Sunny Beach Night and Palm Beach Dust tracks into your custom course that are normally only playable in the game's time attack mode.
This is a pretty fucking incredible achievement by Howard, and adds a huge amount of extra replayability to the game. Something it wasn't exactly sure of in the first place, seeing as how I'm still playing it in 2019, 16 years after the original Sega Chai Hero arcade game came out. And mentioning the original Chai Hero version of OutRun 2 there, segues nicely into the last bit of OutRun 2 related news I wanted to talk about. The Sega Chai Hero ball was basically an original Xbox with double the amount of RAM of a standard model. And until recently, the only way to play Sega Chai Hero games at home, well a small selection of them anyway, was to actually physically upgrade an Xbox yourself by soldering extra RAM modules into it, and obviously having a modded machine in the first place. In my previous video, I'd mentioned that emulation of the Chai Hero board was now underway, and at the time of uploading, it was possible to boot up the arcade beta version of the Chai Hero version of OutRun 2 using an original Xbox emulator called CXBXR. Although you could boot the game up and navigate through the car and music selection menus, the game would crash before you could get to the track. Well, things have moved on since then, and it's now possible to actually get in game and play it. Admittedly, the graphics are pretty messed up once you do, and everything looks like you've just dropped a particularly strong tab of acid. And additionally, the game is not running at full speed. Now, considering that SPDX is actually the superior version of all the arcade outrun variants, you might be wondering why I'm so bothered about seeing this version of the game running at home. And the simple truth is, I just love seeing this slice of Sega arcade history slowly developing to something resembling the actual Chai Hero arcade game on my PC. The thing is as well, original Xbox emulation seems to have been a particularly difficult nut to crack from what I can gather. And it wasn't all that long ago that I can remember seeing people talking on internet forums about how once original Xbox emulation actually properly got underway and got a bit more advanced, it might be possible to emulate Chai Hero games at some point in the future, but there was no guarantee. And here we are now in 2019, with an Xbox emulator that can not only boot up the arcade version of OutRun 2, but also play the arcade Chai Hero version of Virtua Cop 3 almost perfectly now. It's pretty incredible really. Now, whilst we're on the subject of emulation... Sega TV. Another little side note of interest that's loosely outrun related is the fact that Sega Race TV has finally become playable at home. This is another game that shares the same Lindeberg hardware as SPDX, and the reason it's noteworthy in this video is because Sega Race TV was the last game developed by OutRun's original creator, Yu Suzuki, before he left Sega to establish his own video game development studio. So Sega Race TV is a fairly significant piece of Sega arcade racing history, and the fact it's now finally playable at home is pretty awesome. The emulation isn't quite perfect yet though. The boost button makes the game crash. Of the game's five selectable tracks, the final two will make the game crash if you try and pick them. Sometimes the game will just crash anyway for no apparent reason, and also the sound is kind of messed up when you very first start playing it. But oddly, it does seem to improve quite a lot after your initial go. All of the mid-2000s punk songs in this, though, sound like third-party match content strikes just waiting to happen, so I'm afraid I'm not going to be demonstrating any of the music here. You do have to wonder though just what exactly Yu Suzuki had been smoking when he came up with the idea for the obnoxious TV presenter guy, Jake, who looks a bit like a bargain basement Hulk Hogan who's let himself go a bit, together with his ginger afro backing dancers. So anyway, back on topic. I guess the big question now is, now that I've finally been able to play Outrun 2 SPDX at home, do I still think the PC version of OutRun Coast to Coast, with the FXT mod and the lens flare effects working properly, is still the best version? This is a tough one, but I think the answer is still yes. 
SPDX is undoubtedly better looking, but I think the PC version still comes out on top. Whilst it might not be quite as pretty as its arcade big brother, it still has more content than SPDX in terms of additional bonus cars that weren't in the arcade. There's also the extra mission modes that I talked about in the last video that add to the game's longevity as well as loads of new music. There's also what I like to call the Turbo Nutter variants of all of the 15 regular cars that are faster versions of their normal counterparts with different bodywork that are much harder to handle too. There were faster tuned variants of the regular cars that you could select in SPDX's time attack mode, but they didn't have the crazy pimped up bodywork of the ones in Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. In my mind now though, the biggest ace up the PC version sleeve is undoubtedly Howard's custom course app. This is a pretty revolutionary addition to the game and as I previously mentioned adds hugely to its replayability. So having the actual arcade Lindbergh version at home is a brilliant addition to the Outrun 2 family. And I do love the pick up and play simplicity of this version. But for my money the PC version is still, with the aforementioned FXT mod and custom course app, the definitive version. But much like your underachieving children, why should you need to pick a favourite one? Just get a hold of both your PC, and then you're golden. Now before I go, I mentioned that there were a couple of little things that I wanted to revisit from my Outrun 30th Anniversary Tribute video that I uploaded back in 2016. The first thing is in regards to my opinion of the Mega Drive version of the original Outrun back then. I was pretty dismissive of it and said that I always thought that Sun Inc. just looked a bit off about the game. Turns out I wasn't the only one, because someone hacked the Mega Drive ROM in 2014 and adjusted the colours to make them look less dark and far more like the actual arcade game. The original game is the one on the left, the hacked version is the one on the right, and as you can see for yourself, stylistically this looks a lot closer to the arcade original. The hack doesn't just lighten the colours of the game though, in some instances it completely replaces them altogether, where the initial background colour of the stage was completely incorrect in the first place. Despite the colours being a bit off in the original game though, I realised in hindsight that I was being a bit overly harsh, that it's actually a pretty decent port all things being considered, with a decent and smooth frame rate, nice mega driverified meaty sounding renditions of the game's original iconic three tunes, and it plays pretty well with the Mega Drive's default three button pad. Also, in a little bit of foreshadowing of Outrun 2SP's bunky animations, if you met certain conditions in the game, you were rewarded at the crossroads with a flyby of either the Sega Blimp, the F-14 from Afterburner, or the spaceship from Galaxy Force. Nice! I've even developed a bit of a soft spot for the additional new fourth tune that was created for the game, Step on B. I actually only just found out recently that in the Nintendo Switch Sega Ages version of Outrun, there's a new version of it that's been created to sound like it would have using the Arcade Machine soundboard, and that's the version that you can hear playing in the background now. And this leads me on nicely into my next addition to 30 years of Outrun, the aforementioned Nintendo Switch version. See, the Nintendo Switch wasn't even a thing when I made my tribute video back in 2016, so this is another new port of the game that's appeared since then. As far as I can tell, this seems to be more or less a recreation of the 3DS version, with all the extra bells and whistles that game had, like widescreen, arcade machine-like bezels for the game, and different colours for your fake Ferrari. 
One interesting addition to the 3DS game were two brand new tunes that were created. I believe using the original game's audio hardware to create that authentic 80s outrun feel. And they both sound brilliant. The Switch version adds some additional new music, which is equally good and is what I've been using as the main background music throughout this video. I really wish these Sega Ages games would come out on other systems other than Nintendo ones though. Particularly when you consider that the Sega Ages games originated on the PlayStation 2. My PS4 PSVR headset is just itching for some 3D Outrun and Afterburner good times. Come on Sega, how about it? The very last thing I just wanted to add was an omission from the list of all the home ports of Outrun I featured originally. This glorious hunk of oversized plastic that was the grandstand LCD version of Outrun. This is basically just an embiggened version of this LCD handheld version of the game. The game is... not great. I'm going to add a link to the video description of a review of the tabletop version by YouTuber Ashens that discusses the full horror of the machine. It's very amusing. The real reason I wanted to show this big lump of oversized plastic here though is because I've always thought it would be great to have a tabletop version of the game that looked like that but with the real arcade version of Outrun in there running off something like a small form PC or a Raspberry Pi. Somebody's already made an awesome DIY project like this with a Tomy Turnin Turbo Dashboard Tabletop game that's a lot of T's in there which in fairness is probably a better choice as it's got the bigger screen area but there's just something about the look of the big plastic monstrosity that is Grandstand's Outrun game, with its fake front end of a Ferrari design that I just absolutely adore. Are you seriously telling me you wouldn't want to play a bit of real arcade Outrun on one of these? Someone else on YouTube created a tiny little miniature upright version of Outrun from scratch, and it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's not just an Outrun upright though, He's got Outrun 2, Chase HQ and Daytona USA in there as well, as well as lots of other games. I'm going to add links in the video description to both of the full length videos of these miniature Outrun projects. They're definitely well worth a watch. Arcade 1UP guys! makers of the scaled down DIY arcade cabinets you can buy. If you're watching this, make one of these and make it in this scale. I will literally throw money at you. Okay, maybe not literally throw money at you, but fuck it, I'll be prepared to pay ridiculous amounts for one of these. Add in a mini variant afterburner version as well and I would be one happy guy. Okay, so let's wrap things up here. Outrun 2 SBDX is awesome. The custom course editor for the PC version of Outrun 2 FXT is awesome. The progress made in emulating the original arcade Chai Hero version is awesome. What more can I say? It's great to see that in this dystopian future setting of 2019, there's still room for new things to happen in the beautiful blue sky world of Outrun. I guess I'll catch you again in another couple of years. For another update featuring the Sega Ages Direct Neural Implant Augmented Reality Ultra Haptic version of Outrun. Hopefully Sega might have got the Ferrari license back by then. Hey, so if you're a big Sega fan and you enjoyed this video, why not check out my retrospective look back at another piece of Sega history as I talk about the Wonder Boy series of games and my experiences with them, including the modern remake of Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap, and I also review the new modern day addition to the series, Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. Spoilers, it's awesome. I'll add a link to it at the end of this video. Again, if you enjoyed my additional musings on Outrun here, please don't forget to hit the like button and drop a comment on it. All these things help me get noticed by the indifferent, cold-hearted mistress that is the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, catch you again soon. Ta-ta!